That's what you see, 52. It's the last one, 52 weeks, 52 devotionals, one year devotional. This is it, the best for last. <laughs> it's called Reckless Faith. And I'll tell you, uh, the person that we talk about in this chapter is a king named Jehu. And I remember years ago, I was trying to build uh, an orphanage down in Mexico. And I took this preacher down there, and uh, he had a pretty good sized church, and he wanted to help us get it built. And we put up quite a bit of money, like six digits. And then it got around to where we were done with the orphanage. I said, hey man, uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we build some churches around here? Grab some of these people that are coming across the border and hold them up and uh, let them know about Jesus before they get to the river. Let's build some churches. He says, well, how much do you think they're gonna cost? And I said, well, the, the missionary down there told me like 30,000 bucks a piece. He said, well, how many you wanna build? I said, well, let's build a baker's dozen. Let's just do 12. <laughs> and so, you know, you're looking at a better part of a half a million bucks and we had just spent probably way over that. And he looked at me and said, you know, we, we got other things that we need to spend money on. I said, well, I ain't asking you for no money. You don't want to do it, just step out of the way, I'll do it. So he looked at me and he says, you know what, man? He was kind of disgusted and angry because he was looking forward to getting out of the, the commitment to doing what we'd done, it was finished. He says, you know what, man? He says, you have reckless faith. And he didn't say it in a nice way. <laughs> he meant it as a cut. And I thought about it for a second and I thought, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I guess maybe I do. What's, what's wrong with that? He says, you know, you need to have their, their safety in the multitude of counsel. And he, and he goes, you know, the Bible says that a man weighs the cost before he builds a ship or a house. And he goes through all these verses about how you should talk about something for a while before you do it, right? And that, and that stepping all the way out there so quickly to just take on a debt like that to build 12 churches without even considering or having a meeting or talking to anybody or asking permission or asking somebody if they want to go to the bathroom or whatever. I mean, slow down a little bit, man. You get reckless faith. And he meant it like to put me down. And so here's what I said. I said, wait a minute, man. Uh, um, well, I get what you're saying, but I guess you're going to have to explain a few things to me. You're the preacher. I'm just a working guy. You're the preacher. Well, how do you explain a 17-year-old kid taking on a giant with nothing but a, a, a slingshot and a rock? I mean, he didn't have no meetings. He didn't go home and ask your dad. He, he didn't talk to anybody. As a matter of fact, they all tried to talk him out of it. And he said, no, man, this is where we're going. Let's get to it. I mean, couldn't that be considered reckless? And then go to the other end of the spectrum. Look at this cat. Moses was 80 years old. He shows up to take on the most powerful man in the entire world. He take, take on Pharaoh with a stick. And he had, a, he had like a 30, 40 year murder warrant hanging over his head. As soon as he came into town, he could have got strung up. He didn't ask anybody what he should do. God said, go. And he says, man, I don't know if I can. And God said, take these people with you. But in any case scenario, get moving. What about Gideon? He got 110,000 guys he's got to fight. And he sent all of his army home because they drank water the wrong way. And he keeps 300. And now he's going to step out because of one dream with a pillow and some dew. I mean, read it. He's going to step out now with 300 men with nothing but horns and jars. And he's going to and he's going to take on 110,000 men with 300 guys. It seemed a little reckless to me. And then you look at Jesus himself. Takes on the whole world, man. A carpenter's son God uses with 12 fishermen, basically, and a couple tax collectors. I mean, does that seem a little reckless? And then wait a minute. One other thing I was telling this preacher guy. What about Barnabas and Matthias? When it was all said and done in the book of Acts, they said, hey man, Jesus appointed 12 of us. Now there's only 11 because Judas is gone. If Jesus wanted 11, he would have appointed 11, but he appointed 12. So let's get it on. We got to get another guy before we tackle the world. So who should we get? So they bring up uh, 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 Barsabbas and, and Matthias. And they, they roll dice. No, check it out. Read it. They say, okay, you guys sit over there like, like you're a seven and you're a three. Anything under three at you, anything over seven at you. They roll them out. It's over a seven. They say, Matthias, you're it. Let's roll. It, it, it seemed like a little reckless. It would be super reckless today. I mean, think about it. You lose a Sunday school director in church and they take a year to find a new guy. Pastor dies and they got an associate pastor for two years while they look around for the right guy. Listen, reckless faith means 
you're going to get it on, you're going to get it on now, and if you get in my way, I'm going to roll over you. That's why the Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. If you've got an excuse of why you can't serve me, get out of the way. But check it out. There might just be something that needs being done by a reckless man. You want to know how reckless Jehu was? He's the guy that the chapter's about. Jehu was so cotton pick and reckless that Elisha, now think about this, the guy who had a double portion of God's anointing from Elijah to Elisha. Elisha tells his servant, get over here, man. Servant comes up and says, what, can, what do you want me to do? He goes, I want you to go down, take this oil, and I want you to anoint Jehu king. And after you pour the oil on him, servant goes, yeah. He said, run. <laughs> this guy's crazy. When you, when you put the oil on, get out of town, man. And what happens when Jehu goes out to settle up some scores and to do some killing that God needed to be done? There were some prophetic words that needed to be fulfilled. There was some killing that needed to be done. Some people that had spit in God's face and put his people down. King Ahab and Jezebel. There was some killing that needed to be done. There was some tough, tough roads that needed to be run. So what did God do? He chose a man who, who would step out and do it and not have meetings and talk about it. And it says that as, as they came riding up to the king, the king said, hey man, who is that out there? Read it. And the servant said, I don't know who that is, man, but it looks like Jehu. And they said, why do you say that? And he says, because he's riding like a wild man. So see, God may need something done that only a wild man that will step out and go for it can do. And if that's you today and you're looking at something that looks a little bit wild, it looks a little bit crazy. It looks a little bit like climbing a mountain that's impossible to climb. Step into it because the reason you were chosen might just be, be, be because you have reckless faith. And don't take that as a cut. And if someone tells you you got reckless faith, take it as a badge of honor, man. Kick the door in and get moving. That's it.